live. <laughs> okay, so welcome to Breathe Life Ministries. We are doing a live panel discussion, loving your immune system. This is a topic that we really need some excellent discussion on. And I am so excited because I have two of my favorite life and health coaches with me today to give us their insights, share from their life experience and their wealth of knowledge on what the immune system is, uh, how we can actually participate in building our immune system, uh, things that we can do that may sabotage this beautiful gift we've been given from God, and then ways to uh, just rethink, really regroup, rethink and be set free to to boost our immune system and live a healthy life. So what I'd like to do right now is uh, kind of give you a breakdown of how this is going to go. We're going to start with uh, the discussion with both Marcella and Christy, a facilitated discussion with me. And then at the end, um, go ahead and ask your questions and we will be doing a live question and answer. If you have things that you want to um, discuss or remember, go ahead and put them in the comments. We may save it though for, we may not answer it right away. We may save it for the end of the discussion when we dive into the Q&A. Please like and share this video so that others can benefit from this discussion. Um, and, you know, regardless of where you are at, this is one of the things I've been saying over and over again, regardless of where you're at with different precautions you're taking personally, having a healthy immune system is just needed, period. It, it you, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, you can't just do one thing and then forget everything else. So this is going to be a real important discussion for you to participate in and benefit from. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Marcella Owen, who is a life, a Christian life and health coach out of California. And Christy Crenshaw of Kingdom Health Builders. She's located out of Kentucky. And both of them come from different perspectives. But again, it's beautiful to see how the Holy Spirit just unifies that into one whole thought. So Marcella, I'd like to start with you. If you would just um, share a little bit about what you do, your ministry, and and then Christy, go ahead after, after that, following up with that and uh, go. Absolutely. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. And my niche is really health and wellness. That's, that's my bread and butter. That's what I love. That's what my passion is. And I've been involved in years and years and years and incorporating the Lord in the mix Amen. makes a world of difference. So that's what I do. I work with primarily women. I go by health and prosperity coach. And ironically, I think this uh, is the same for several coaches where you experience something and that becomes your specialty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So after being in corporate America for about 27 years, I had some thyroid issues and some digestive issues. And I thought I can help others after all the research that I've done. And then inevitably, because when you address your health, other components of life come to light. <laughs> Relationships, right? Career, yes. spiritually even. Yes. In all different kinds of ways that manifest in your health. So we end up talking about all kinds of different things depending on the person. It's, it's very individual. And uh, having the Lord in the mix just makes it so much more powerful. And inviting the Holy Spirit to all sessions makes it so much more powerful. Oh, but yeah. I, I'm a huge believer in that if you don't have your health, how can you operate and how can you do anything else? And one of the things that I teach is that the, the Lord wants you to love others as you love yourself. But how can you love yourself if you're not taking care of yourself? Oh, That's so almost impossible, right? And they, there's the cliche of, oh, well, if you take care of yourself, it's selfish. If you put yourself first, but it's actually the opposite. 
it's selfless because then you're filled and equipped to take care of others. So that's where, that. that's the point of view where I come from. Awesome. Awesome. Christy. Hello, everyone. And um, thanks so much, Donna, for having this discussion and for um, giving us the opportunity and the honor to come and speak uh, with your audience. Now, uh, for me, my story is similar to Marcella's, uh, but instead of corporate America, I actually worked in the healthcare system. Okay. So, you know, I've spent pretty much all of my adult life um, working in different aspects of the healthcare system, some clinical, some office, in, you know, ranging anywhere from um, a CNA all the way to a dialysis technician. So the Lord has really given me a very broad perspective of the traditional healthcare system. And I got to see firsthand um, a lot of what goes on and um, how the traditional healthcare system really doesn't work for health and wellness. Right. And, um, you know, I kind of had a similar story, you know, back about five or six years ago, I was well over a hundred pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. um, I had been diagnosed with uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, didn't sleep well, you know, just, I was basically a shell of a person. Right. And through, you know, doing my own research to heal myself first, mm -hmm. you know, I figured out, you know, what was going on as far as um, the diet, exercise or lack thereof, and um, different supplementation and things like that to truly let my body be the healer mm. because I truly believe that God has given us a gift in this body and it is intelligent. He designed this body with an innate intelligence. And if we give it what it needs, it knows how to heal itself. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love what both of you are bringing here. Two things that I'm taking away here is um, that, that, that God has created us to self-heal mm -hmm. and it's miraculous and it's and it's you know his divine creativity and engineering at play and then what you said marcella about how when we love ourselves by caring for ourselves it is an act of worship it is an act of 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 sacrifice mm -hmm. this is so good when we were preparing this discussion well, um, before I step on any further, we did want to also just provide a disclaimer, and that is before we go any further, um, Marcella and Christy are life and health coaches, and it's very, and I myself do not have any training whatsoever, other than just learning from, from those who know more than me. Um, the any decisions that you'd make out of this discussion put them through your health professional a a licensed health professional before you implement them because every body is unique right and every body is going to process things a little differently yeah. so you want to make sure that you're doing that from a from a position of being counseled by your medical health professional first exactly so these are these are all suggestions these are all things that from personal life and ex life and experience um christy and marcella have learned that work for them that have worked for their clients but and they've they've done a lot of studying but they want you to know that any decision that you make, consult with your medical professional first. So without that, with the, now, now, now to move forward, one of the other awesome things that we have discussed, the three of us, is how our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And I think both of you touched on that in your introduction. I'm just going to share a scripture with you. Mm -hmm. Um. And we've done that. There we go. There we go. Here we are. Um, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, 
and you are not your own. That is like that is very closely related to what you were saying, Marcella, mm -hmm. in loving your neighbor as you love yourself. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So I'd like you both to touch on that. Um, let's start with you, Christy. Um, touching on this scripture and how how you've discovered applying that and then in particular to the immune system. Okay, well, for me, when I really when the Holy Spirit really nailed that scripture down to me was a time when I was struggling to make some of the necessary changes. Maybe I was um, being a little resistant to mm -hmm. some things I wasn't wanting to give up. Some of the things that I thought, you know, were being taken from me when I needed to change my diet and eliminate the sugar, eliminate the gluten and a really scale back on the amount of caffeine, increase the water. You know, those aren't things that people want to hear most right. of the time. We want someone to tell us, oh, you can eat what you want to eat and you can restore your health and you can do, you know, everything you want to do. But the real truth is, is you have to make changes. You right. can't do the same thing that you've been doing and expect to get, you know, anything different. You know, it's the definition of insanity. <laughs> but with that being said, you know, I was resisting and the Holy Spirit really illuminated that verse of scripture to me one day. And he's like, that body that you have does not belong to you. Mm. My blood and my sacrifice paid for your body. Wow. And I need you to now glorify and honor me in that body. And when you are sick and morbidly obese, you are not giving glory to me. Wow. And again, not, you know, and please don't anybody take any of this as shaming. Right. Or, you know, because I was there, you know, like I said, I'm a short person and I was well over 250 pounds. And I truly and deeply loved the Lord. Right. But I knew I had that check in my spirit that just something wasn't right. And in no. all of that, you know, crying out to the Lord and, you know, really seeking him was when he really started to, to bring these things to the forefront about glorifying him in this body and that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. And then taking that one step further, you know, and how does all of that um, apply and affect the immune system? Yes. You know, everything that we take into our body has a direct effect on every system of your body, including the immune system. Mm. Uh, we need a healthy, balanced diet in order for all systems to work correctly. And I know a lot of people, um, since the the outbreak of the virus, you know, we won't name it specifically, but, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis on vitamin D, vitamin C, things like zinc um, that really help to build and strengthen the immune system. Mm -hmm. But the real truth of that is, is if we are already eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, then we don't need to do as much supplementation. Very and if good. we're not putting things in the body, that are damaging and actually suppress the immune system. And I know we're going to go into, you know, immune system suppressors in more detail, mm -hmm. but you know, that it's just kind of, it's a balancing act, right? You, know, you need to not be putting things in the body that are going to damage or suppress the immune system while also putting enough things in the body that are going to give your body what it needs to build the immune system cells. You know, we need all of the, the nutrients to build the cells that actually go out and do the protecting and the attacking of the foreign invaders. Awesome. Awesome. Marcella, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, first, I want to say very well said. I've been wanting to use these. <laughs> <laughs> I have others. I love it. So uh, to add to that, there's a saying that says you're either going to take care of your health or you're going to take care of your illness, and it's your choice. So I think that choice is very important. And as believers, yes, our body is a temple of the Lord. And not only did he create us perfect, 
but he also created a perfect world around us with all the nutrients and the fuel that we need in food. Let food be thy medicine, right? So I think it's very important to remember that. And when we want to make a change, when we want to pursue a better, I call it a lifestyle because diet right. has such a negative connotation and it truly, diets truly, in my opinion, don't work per se, because you can't do something for a month and then drop off and go back to sugar, caffeine, carbs, whatever else, right? Junk. So it's really a lifestyle change, but as creatures of habit, <laughs> as being humans, it's not always that easy. Mm -hmm. So when you're using the Lord as your rock, and your motivation, right? That's where that scripture takes me. And then you make a decision for yourself. It, it, it takes making a decision and making an effort in right. wanting to make changes for the better. And two, th two ways that I encourage my clients and that I've encouraged myself as well is to figure out your why. And we talked about that different, you know, coaches call it differently. I call it your MOFA, your motivating factor. Yes, of course, as believers, we want to follow God's commands, right? But what else in your life is a motivating factor? Perhaps yes. your grandchildren, or yes. perhaps a marathon that you want to run, or your career is very physical, physically intensive, or, you know, your husband, you want to have a long, healthy life together, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking about that ties in with your mindset, right? Yes. Because your, your thoughts create your actions. And that is something that I think it's very important that I spend some time on with my clients to ensure that when they're, they're not motivated or when they're having a challenge, we go back to that and remind right. them, well, what's your motivating factor for doing this anyway? Right. right. And then you include prayer in the strength of the Lord and it's a win-win. Awesome. Awesome. I love how you segued Marcella to the why. Christy, what is it when you go over the why? I know we talked about the Holy Spirit and being a temple, but uh, could you expand also on this thought of the why? Um, Mar Marcella did a great job identifying some of the micro whys, like mm -hmm. you know, the, the more individualized whys. How do you address that with your clients? I like to try to get my clients to picture where do you want to be a year from now? Where do you want to be five years from now? And then where do you see yourself like in the distant future? Mm -hmm. And it's not just about, um, you know, I try to say, you know, what do you want to be doing with your family? What do you want to be doing either in a career, in a business? What do you want to be doing for the Lord wow. at that point? You know, what, you know, let's encompass the whole thing. So, you know, and in those times, you know, when they, like she said, the motivating factors, you know, when they are feeling very unmotivated and overwhelmed, you know, we can come back and say, okay, this is the reason why you're doing this. These are the things that you said you wanted to accomplish in your future and poor health or even not being around at all because of the health choices that you've made. You know, these are the things that you need to use to motivate and push yourself forward. You yes. know, you know, what are those goals that you want to achieve for your life, for your health. And again, you know, what are the things that you feel the Lord has told you to accomplish in your lifetime? Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I love this. I mean, cause it's reminding me of that passage in the Bible where it says my people perish for lack mm -hmm. of vision, for lack of vision, mm -hmm. knowing what the goal is. Uh, Paul identified it as pressing on towards the upward call and um, our bodies are the vessels mm -hmm. that God uses in this present time to move his purpose in his kingdom purpose and that plays out in our families in our in our relationships and in our calling mm -hmm. this is so good Let's see here. I'm just going to touch on our notes here. So, um, Marcella, could yeah. you describe in your own words what the immune system is? Sure. As you were talking about our vessel, there's components mm -hmm. of that vessel. 
And the way I see it is like your engine. Yes. And you have to oil it and fuel it and protect it so it can protect you and run efficiently for you. And there's a lot of things what we can do to nourish it. And there's a lot of things we could do to decline it and not take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I see it is that if you include all the components necessary to strengthen it, your chances of getting ill or having your body not work properly diminish, right? And, and it takes looking at your sleep, at your exercising, eating eating healthfully. And a lot of people that I come across think they're eating healthfully. Oh, I'm eating healthy. All right, let's explore. Let's see what you're eating. Keep. Let's look at a journal of your day and see what you're eating. And we find out that there's a lot of processed foods that appear to be healthy because it has natural or it has fat free, which is, ah, that's sugar, right? <laughs> sugar call. So you really want to look at your lifestyle, your your eating lifestyle, right? To oh. ensure that you're nourishing your immune system. And then as we spoke earlier, there is supplementation as Christy said right now with the crisis that's going on. Vitamin D is extremely essential, vitamin C and zinc. And I would even say quercetin, mm -hmm. that it's also another element that is helpful to boost your immune system. And then of course, being in community, things mm -hmm. like that, going outside, being in nature, right? All of these things and spiritually being in the word every day is huge because when you're calm and your parasympathetic nervous system is on where, where you're just relaxed, you can think, you know, it's your flight or fight thing, right? Uh, you your thoughts and when you're not stressed affects your immune system. If you're stressed and you're con continually in tumult and you're in your mind, you're, you're thinking about all these things, right? That is going to decay your immune system. So that's really important that people maybe sometimes don't think of. So being connected to the Lord mm -hmm. is huge because yes usually when people are stressed is because they have a fear of some sort. And yeah. the Bible says over 360 times, fear not, kind of like my thing in the back. <laughs> and, um, and it's so very important. And recently I've come across a few scriptures that really enforce that. Yes. There's Luke, uh, I think it's Luke 10, 19, that the end of it says, nothing will harm you. And then I start thinking about, well, nothing means nothing. It doesn't mean a couple of things, maybe two or three, maybe something will harm you, maybe not, it says nothing, right? And then Psalm 91, I think five says that the Lord will rescue you from every trap, not some traps, not a couple of traps, it's every, right. right? And the last one that I'm gonna mention is the Lord says, I will never leave you never never means never it's not right. well i might leave you when you're a b or c and i might not when you're x y and z no never so when you're in the word that strengthens you therefore it strengthens your immune system oh, and so that my friends is real talk <laughs> i love it <laughs> i love it christy um define the immune system in your own words um, in my words and kind of the way that I have described it to people is it's kind of like um, a software operating system for your computer. You know, the whole body, you know, we have to have all of the necessary programs in order for the system to work as it should. And if you have a file that either is corrupted or gets deleted or just mm -hmm. did never got properly downloaded, right. then it's not going to operate correctly. And the same thing with our immune system. I mean, we, you know, think of your body as the, the computer or the PC, right. the immune system is one of the software programs and it has all of its different little files and functions and components. And when it's all installed and functioning correctly, then everything runs and functions smoothly. But again, if you get a corrupted file, <laughs> you get a virus, 
you know, something like that, that comes in and messes things up, then it doesn't run and function smoothly the way that it was intended to. So, you know, again, we have, you know, the immune system is built up of different types of cells that have different responses to things. You know, um, we all hear about inflammation and sometimes inflammation in and of itself is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, an inflamed response is how the body is supposed to react to injury and to illness. But it's when things get out of control and the inflammation runs rampant is when we end up with chronic illnesses and diseases. So like say if somebody breaks an arm, Mm. that area is gonna be swollen, it's gonna be inflamed, but that's because the immune system is rushing to that area to bring healing to it. You know, there's an increase in uh, blood flow to that area. There's an increase in the white blood cells, red blood cells, I mean, everything that's necessary. Right. And that's the, the way that the body should respond. But if, you know, again, if we're giving, not giving the body everything that it needs, so, you know, some necessary files or components are missing, then that software isn't going to work like it's supposed to, or the system of the body is not going to work like it's supposed to. Or again, if we're participating in immune system sabotagers, then, you know, it's going to actually get in there and corrupt those files and not allow them to work the way that they should. That is very, very good and an excellent segue. So Christy, go ahead and kick off. Name, um, give us from your experience, five immune system sabotagers, and then Marcella, you give five. Okay. Uh, For me, I know um, one of a huge one for me is gluten Mm. um and also toxins toxins that are found in um, the everyday products that we use your skincare Mm -hmm. um your home cleaning um even in the food you know we talk a lot about the the processed packaged foods they contain a lot of chemicals and things in there that, that can come and disrupt and um And then another big one is pesticides and herbicides that's used on our food. So for me, those are the the top five that I really look for that kind of come in and corrupt the files. And, you know, I know there's a lot more, but I'm going to leave some for Marcella to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So for me is, I agree with everything Christy said, definitely stress, stress, Mm -hmm. stress, stress. I think it's a huge component of that. MSG, which Mm -hmm. is hidden in food and people don't know it because it has different names. GMOs, Mm -hmm. which is typically in wheat, corn, and soy, which I recommend you completely stay away unless it's organic, non-GMO certified. Mm -hmm. And then as uh, Christy was saying in toxic personal products, agreed 100% shampoo, makeup, uh, cleaning products in your home and people don't understand, Tide laundry detergents, all kinds of different oh. chemicals that affect your immune system. And in side to side to that, I'm going to say toxic people, Ooh. because that <laughs> can bring your immune system down. And to have the courage to ask the Lord to give you wisdom and the right words to exclude toxic people from your life and not in a mean way, not in a disrespectful way, but in a kind manner. And and God can guide you through that. And then the last thing I thought of is herbicides and pesticides. And I want to mention glyphosate specifically that's in Roundup, which is something that big agricultural companies use for all the crops, but it's also available for a regular consumer to buy at Home Depot to put in their garden. So one example, and I know all about it, there's a lot of lawsuits going on, but uh, I had a a gardener that wanted to use it on my my garden. And I said, absolutely not. And I'm glad he mentioned it because he could have oh, used yeah. it without telling me. Yeah. I said, no, absolutely not. And in fact, you shouldn't be using that yourself because it causes illness. So, so he's no longer my, my gardener, but <laughs> just something to keep in mind of. Oh, very good. You know, I, I'm really glad you guys mentioned these things. Well, one, you know, I, I'd gotten a notification actually in my email about Roundup being sued on a class action lawsuit right now. Correct. Um, but, uh, 
um, the, the hair shampoo uh, had not even thought about hair shampoo or even, I mean, I, laundry detergents, the only time I've ever even thought about laundry detergents was just, you know, I, I tend to get a lot of skin allergies. So I use the, the completely clear, perfect, perfume free. Oh, perfect. Free. Mm -hmm. But I, I hadn't thought about just in general yeah. uh, on these things. So, and I just thought of one more that I think oh, it's super important to mention is EMFs and dirty electricity. So mm -hmm. electronic ma magnetic frequencies and dirty electricity that's coming out of printers, computers, TVs, your Wi-Fi, your ear buds that are um, cordless, mm -hmm. uh, smart meters, and mm -hmm. all of this can definitely affect your immune system and especially your sleep, your Ooh. thyroid, your hormones, and people don't know 5G, <laughs> people don't know about this, but it's very worth uh, researching. And if yeah. anyone's interested, DM me or reach out to me because I have a lot of resources on that front. And a lot of the time it solves questionable or mysterious health conditions that people are experiencing for months or maybe years by removing some of these items or protecting yourself with filters from EMFs and dirty electricity and 5G and their health uh, improves drastically. That's, it's a good, it's an excellent, excellent point. And if this sounds like science fiction to y'all, well, we're living in the world of science fiction. My <laughs> we friend. are. We truly are. It, it I mean, it, um, I've, I've listened to different reports from very reputable sources on the subject of technology and in particular, why, um, the new 5G. It's, 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 we're, 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 and I don't want to digress too far, but I've been reading articles in tech magazines and so forth where we're literally at this crossroads where our technology is growing faster than our ability to even understand it. Mm -hmm. And and they've talked, they've predicted that we would get to this place for years. Well, we're actually starting to cross over that edge. Um, so so if it sounds weird, if it sounds like science fiction, well, we actually are living in that era now. And these things do impact our bodies uh, because of the air waves and other things. Um, so, I mean, I'm just trying to validate what Marcella is saying here. And I see Christy nodding her head as well. Um, so it's worth looking into. It truly is. Marcella, I'd like you to jump off on the sleep. And then Christy, I'd like you to also sure. touch on that as well. The importance of sleep. Absolutely. I, sleep is when we have the opportunity for our bodies to regenerate, to detox, to relax. And that's where the parasympathetic nervous system comes into play when you're relaxed. And if you have a lot going on up here, if you just got off your phone, you know, with the blue light that affects your brain, it tells your brain, you know, on the computer or the phone has the blue light, right? So it's telling your brain, oh, it's not time to go to sleep because there's this bright light, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to shut down maybe two to three hours before you go to bed, at least one, and maybe read and create an environment in your room where it's dark, it's cool, it's peaceful and harmonious. Some experts say not to put pictures of your relatives that give you grief or have been toxic in your, life, in your room. <laughs> So I put pictures of people that bring me happiness uh, and then no TV in the room. Right. Mm. And alcohol really disrupts your sleep. I mean, I'm all for a glass of red wine, but if you're having trouble sleeping, it's very important to cut the alcohol because that wakes you up in the middle of the night or keeps you from having a restful sleep. And then something that I get asked all the time is, well, should I wear my Apple watch? Because I really want to track my sleep. Well, you're emitting EMFs all night long and perhaps even all day long and no judgment if anybody wears it, you know, it's your choice, but at least put it on airplane mode as you would do with your regular phone or get all electronics out of the room as much as possible. So then you can get that restful sleep. You can regenerate, you can detox. And then the next day you're refreshed. 
Uh, and then in terms of how many hours of sleep, it just really depends on the person. I'm a seven to eight hour person. Mm -hmm. If I don't get that, I can't really function as yeah. efficiently as I would like. Right. Some people can get away with less. I, I don't know how they do that, uh, <laughs> but it's really a personal thing. And, but I think it's extremely important for good health up there, sleep almost maybe even number one with, uh, with exercise, of course, and nutrition, but I think sleep is extremely, extremely important. Yes. Yes. Christy, continue on that thought. Yeah, so I like to tell people that, you know, the Bible talks about the threefold cord that can't mm -hmm. be easily broken. And for me, that is proper nutrition, exercise, and sleep. Mm -hmm. You have to have all three, and all three are just as important. Um, because as Marcella started uh, talking about, when we are sleeping, when our body enters that deep sleep state is the time when uh, metabolic wastes are being cleaned up. That's when, um, that's even when the fat is being burned. If you are changing your lifestyle and you're trying to, to lose some weight and rid some excess body fat, if you're not getting enough sleep, it's going to hinder your weight loss as well, because during that time is when the body is releasing the necessary hormones and going in and grabbing that stored body fat to burn it and use it as fuel. And there are also, um, certain chemicals and hormones that are released at specific times. So it's not just the amount of sleep that you get, but also when you sleep is oh, important. Wow. And a lot of people don't know and understand that. Wow. So, and that's why they've done a lot of studies about people who do shift work. Okay. Either you work third shift, you know, where you're up all night and sleep during the day, or they work like the swing shifts where, you know, for one month you might work a certain shift and the next month you work another shift and, and type of things like that. And what they found is that those people that don't consistently sleep between the hours of 10 and two do not get the release of very necessary hormones for our health. So those are the people that tend to struggle more with their health and with their weight. And yeah, so it's very important to get enough sleep. And again, I'm about a, a seven hour per day person. Um, I have heard of other people that say, oh, I'm good after four. Um, but I'm like, are you really? <laughs> you know, I would like to see, you know, some some logs of how your energy does throughout the day. And um, and also just have that person take a vacation where they sleep six to eight hours for a full week and then tell me if you really think you're doing okay on four. So that's what I would say with that. Um, you know, cause truly we were made to go to sleep when it gets dark mm -hmm. and to wake up when the sun comes up. That's just circadian rhythm, yeah. right? So that's yeah. kind of, that should kind of be our first clue to how much sleep we need. This is so good. This is so good. I, I'm so grateful that both of you brought this up and touched on it uh, from different perspectives, because one of the things that I'm seeing frequently, especially, and I, I, especially with our young kids, I mean, kids like millennials, like my own children and, um, and uh, pre millennial, pre the, the ones just prior to the millennial generation, mm -hmm there is this false idea within them that they don't need to sleep mm -hmm. and i mean they'll they'll be on their phones they'll be on the computer uh they're just constantly it well and what i'm seeing is they become very very sleep deprived and their anxiety levels are just through the roof and uh, and both of these are absolutely as you've been describing detrimental to the success of their their immune system mm -hmm. um uh and just overall emotional well-being uh and of course we we just you know went through the whole situation with facebook and instagram uh demonstrating that it's a that it's addictive and destructive to yeah. particularly girls um ability to have strong mental health mm -hmm. so um excellent excellent i'm so glad you touched on this 
I almost feel like we need to have an entire discussion on <laughs> just the importance of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk now about um, oh, let's talk about exercise and vitamin D. Um, Christy, would you please kick this off? Uh, yeah, now exercise is important for a lot of different reasons, but in talking about the immune system, it helps to boost the immune system in a couple different ways, especially number one, if you're working outside or working out outside, if you're walking, running, jogging, swimming, you know, going outside and dancing or, you know, whatever you choose to do for exercise, if you can do it outside in the sunlight, you'll be getting vitamin D as well. And then another thing that happens with exercise is it lowers stress level and anxiety, especially if you're going outside and you're getting um, space. We were not meant to be cooped up inside all the time and being in the same environment all day long, every day, whether that's at home, at work, at school, um, or, you know, you go to work and then you come home and you're still in a cramped space and environment, it increases stress mm -hmm. and causes cortisol levels to, to increase. And, you know, we've all seen the commercials, you know, we know what cortisol does, but, um, <laughs> but you know, one very easy way to combat that is just to go outside and go for a walk. And, you know, the studies, you know, that have been done about the virus have talked about that basically almost every single person that succumbed to that illness were all overweight. Wow. And they also did a study about what happens when you increase your exercise, you know, and just walking a 20 minute walk every day was enough to strengthen someone's immune system to where that took them from a category to where they would be um, either succumb to the illness or have very severe adverse reactions to being someone that didn't really have a bad reaction to it, that they, they were able to recover right. normally and naturally. And that was really in, in that particular study, that was the only thing they did. They put the people outside and had them walk for 20 minutes. Wow. Every day. Wow. Excellent. So exercise is so important for everything, for your mental health, your physical health. And, you know, we just talked about sleep. If you right. exercise during the day, it helps, you know, increase your um, good deep sleep. Excellent. Excellent. Marcella, your thoughts on exercise and vitamin D. Sure. I'll talk about exercise from a different perspective because okay. I had a client that kept telling herself, I hate exercise. I'm not good at exercise. There's nothing I like in exercise. So we switched the word to movement. Ah, and good. yeah. And I gave her a list of movements that she could pick from. And together we, we were able to find something that she enjoys because even cleaning your closet is movement. Yes, going outside is amazing, right? But if you hate walking, then don't walk, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I encourage people to find what they like or they even love, dancing. Some people, believe it or not, like cleaning their home because then they get that feeling that everything's in order and decluttered, right? Uh, spin is my go-to. But I think it's really important to one, tell yourself that you love movement. Movement empowers me. Movement make, keeps me healthy, right? right? And even if you're, even if you don't believe it at the time, your right. subconscious mind doesn't know what's real and what's not. You just keep saying it, right? Yeah. And then you ask, of course, the Lord to guide you. Mm -hmm. And then on vitamin D, super important i think extra vitamin d right now is is appropriate uh, mm -hmm. supplementation and then if you go outside every day that's awesome something i heard from one of my favorite doctors dr Mar marcola 
excuse me, is that you want to be out in the sun with as little clothes as possible. So your bathing suit. Okay. <laughs> and so then your entire body can absorb the, the vitamin oh, D for good. at least 20 minutes. You know, not everybody can do that depending on where they live, but mm -hmm. they they can also take supplementation, right? Mm -hmm. Of vitamin D3, which is what I would recommend. Vitamin D3. Um quickly um and and you can both can just rapid fire on this what are some nutritional sources of vitamin d3 other than the sun that you can act like like incorporate into your meal plan i don't think there is <laughs> i think it's just supplementation and sun unless christy you know anything else yeah well, i mean one like vitamin c you can find foods but vitamin yeah. d really okay. i thought yeah. for some well, i mean Go ahead. One thing that gets confusing with this is the word vitamin is actually a misnomer with vitamin D. It is not a vitamin per se, like we would think of vitamin C and vitamin E. It is actually a hormone that oh. is produced and synthesized by the body from direct sunlight. So that's why it's fortified in things like milk and other things, because there really are no food sources naturally. Wow. Our bodies were meant to synthesize vitamin D from the sunlight. So that's why getting proper sunlight or even maybe um, there are vitamin D lamps, you know, they call them sunlight lamps that you can, can purchase, you know, like, like we said, if you can't get outside in your bathing suit or tank tops and shorts, you know, you can put that thing in your bathroom right. and you can undress and stand in front of the light. Um, but the very best way to do it again is natural exposure or with proper supplementation. And again, that's something that you'll want to discuss with your doctor. There are blood tests that can be done uh, to see where you're at on your levels. And then, you know, your physician can tell you what the proper supplementation would be for you. Because uh, somebody who spends a lot of time outside may not need very much, whereas somebody who never goes outside, you might need a little more. Well, and, and then um, also states that you live in, like when I was living in Oregon and Washington, we just didn't get enough days of direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. So everybody in that region was pretty vitamin D deficient. Uh, now, since I've moved out here to Tennessee, where I get lots more sunshine, <laughs> not so much. But this is, I see, this is something I didn't know about. Oh, D go ahead actually there is one cod liver oil cod liver oh. oil is the only natural source of vitamin d and also it has some vitamin a uh, with it as well because that's why you know generations past people took cod liver oil was for the vitamin d okay right on excellent excellent discussion excellent um again let's do some rapid fire discussion here um other immune system booster nutrients. Now, Marcella, you mentioned one court quercetin. Yes, could you just talk about that specifically? Yeah, it's a flat flanovoid. I can't remember the name exactly, but it's an element that we need that's typically in onions. Oh. And I actually found out it was in red wine, which I was really happy about. <laughs> And it's just an element that in combination with zinc, vitamin C and vitamin D, it's been a very excellent and strong protocol okay. to maintain your immune system and really protect yourself okay. from not, not this virus only, but other viruses as well. Right. Uh, so I think it's important to look at that, but I also want to encourage everybody to do their own research, mm -hmm. to not just accept what their doctor says because everybody's been trained differently and so maybe get a second opinion if something tells you if the holy spirit is telling you oh this doesn't sound right let me research a little bit more mm -hmm. there are many doctors that are amazing and a lot of them are christians and they spend a lot of their time and effort in in offering solutions to protect your immune system so some of those doctors, I mentioned Dr. Mercola, there's uh, Peter, Muc that's Joseph Mercola, there's Peter Mercola, there's uh, Dr. Lee Merritt, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, Dr. Artis, who's amazing. 
and, and the list goes on and on. So I would encourage everyone to just really consult and maybe get a second opinion if something doesn't sound right. Because awesome. I think the, the quality of any supplementation that you take is very important. You wanna make sure that it's pure. You wanna make sure that it's, if you can, organic, but at least non-GMO, without soy, without wheat, without corn, that is not synthetic. And you may pay a little bit more, but in the long run, it's totally worth it because if you don't take care of your health, then you'll take care of your illness. So if you take supplementation that gives you side effects that has a bunch of chemicals, then that's not doing any good, right? Right. Excellent. So that, that's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Christy, thoughts um, on? I think one of the ones that's really not talked about enough is water. Oh, oh good point. Our body needs water to be able to function for all of our systems. And if you are chronically dehydrated, then your immune system is not gonna function the way that it needs to function either. Uh, you know, one of the, the things that works in conjunction with the immune system is the lymph system, which is what takes away all of the waste products and you know helps our body to, um, to get rid of all of that, the metabolic waste, you know, some of the toxins and, and different things like that. So we need enough water to be able to run every, every system of our body. And when we get into those stages where we are starting to become dehydrated, then the body has to make some very complicated decisions mm. about which system of the body is going to get the water that is available. Wow. And one of the first ones that seems to go, and it seems a little counterintuitive, but sometimes it is the immune system because you can kind of slack off a little bit in the beginning and still not have very detrimental. Whereas, you know, the brain is something very critical. It has to have water. The heart is critical. It has to have it digestion, you know, super critical. It has to have um, the water and the fluid. So some of the other systems and functions of the body, the, it's going to start to um, do what they call drought management. And it's going to shut down providing as much water to those systems. And one of those is unfortunately the immune system. Wow. About and something else to, to mention on water really quick yes, is the quality of your water is yes. really important. You want to make sure you drink clean water and avoid plastic bottles as much as you can because they have BPA and whatever else, right? Uh, get a filter for sure, because there's fluoride, there's chlorine, there's arsenic. I mean, we all have some heavy metals in us, mm -hmm. right? But we definitely want to clean, clean, we want to drink clean water. Very mm -hmm. good. Very good. And uh, quickly about how much water does a person need each day? And there's different, there's so many varying opinions on that. I find for myself that I feel the best when I take my body weight, divide that in half and try to drink that many ounces. Of in water. ounces. Yeah, that's exactly what I learned as well. Excellent. You know, I've tried to do, you know, just the basic 64 or, or this or that, but um, I do find that, you know, as I lose weight, I need less. If I gain weight, I need a little more. So that's where you can, can kind of figure out what's best for you. And of course, you don't want to be drinking water super late at night. Try to get as much of that as you can um, earlier in the day, because then you may be disrupting your sleep if you're drinking a lot of water at night, because you're just going to have to get up at night and use the restroom. So if you are ending your water intake, you know, a couple hours before bedtime, but you're still finding that you're getting up throughout the night, then you might want to cut back a little bit because maybe you are consuming too much water. You know, because you can't have too much of a good thing. So, <laughs> and a tip on water, because a lot of people find it extremely boring, like my husband. <laughs> so he adds uh, grapefruit, little pieces of grapefruit in it and coconut water powder, which just gives it a little bit more electrolytes. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, bubbles, right? In the water, just stay away from sugary drinks. That's what I would say. Herbal teas are great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, now I want to dive into um, question and answer. So those of you who are watching right now, and I see you out there, um, this is a time for you to ask any question you might have. Um, and just uh, let us know if it's a, a gen generally to either Marcella or Christy in general, either one, 
or uh, if, if specifically Marcella or specifically Christy. What questions do you have uh, that you would like addressed right now when it comes to your immune system or your just overall health and well being? Um, and while we're waiting for those questions to come in, um, and thank you everyone for watching. I see Roger and I see Sandra and Teresa. Thank you for watching. And again, go ahead, um, fire away with your questions if you've got them right now. Um, while we're waiting for those to come in, let's talk about how worship impacts the immune system. And then I will just go ahead and interrupt as soon as we get a question. Sure. So one thing that I learned from my spiritual mentor who I met in 2010, so 11 years ago, and as I learned to expand my walk with Christ, mm -hmm. she encouraged me to spend time with the Lord every single day. Mm -hmm. That's going to look different for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. If you have five kids versus if you're single, right? So forth and so on. And I thought every day, that yeah. seems a little rigorous. So I started doing that. And so for me is reading the Bible, whether it's one scripture or, you know, 10 pages, whatever you have time for. And I think five minutes is better than nothing because the Lord can speak to you in those five minutes. Mm -hmm. Devotionals are great, right? Worship music is great. Sometimes um, I hear things through podcasts or through preachers that I listen to. So it just depends, you know, how the, and sometimes I hear things in dreams. I don't know if people do that, uh -huh. um, but very important to stay connected because the Lord has this amazing way to take your fear and your worry. And I think that is the basis of stress. That's the basis of uh, compromising your immune system. So find a way that is fun and maybe it's not the right word but that you look forward to right yeah. and then I think the version of your bible is really important because when I started I had a, a new king james and I was very confused and mm -hmm. so I got a life application bible in a different version nlt and now I can understand it so once you understand it then it's a lot more enriching that's Excellent. what I would say Excellent. And again, we're just waiting for your questions to pop in as we're addressing this subject of worship. Ah, okay. Oh, no problem, Roger. Thanks for joining, buddy. Uh, praying for you. He's happened to drop off and go to a work meeting, but right. love you too, Roger. Um, but uh, the subject of worship, and again, oh, here we've got a question. The best foods to strengthen the immune system from Teresa Sewell. So Christy, um, give your top three foods to boost your immune system. And then Marcella, your top three. Uh, really, for me, it's basically um, healthy, whole foods. Um, I like to eat a lot of salads, you know, mixed green salads um, with uh, just a variety of vegetables. Um, you can do uh, fresh fruits that have, um, I typically like to stay towards the lower sugar kind of fruits, but all, you know, berries and things like that are really high in vitamin C. Um, and then again, like I said, water, those are probably my top three. So I try to stick with the foods that are the most nutrient dense, because I feel that's what's going to feed and um, strengthen my immune system the best. Excellent. Marcella, your top three. Yeah, I would say leafy greens. Mm -hmm. I would say salmon for omega-3, omega threes, but make sure it's well caught. And I would say uh, coconut oil is really amazing as a mm -hmm. superfood. Uh, and on top of that, and what Christy said was perfect, I would say to satiate you and keep you not hungry for hours, fiber, healthy fat and protein. So one example I give is I love green apples. So wow. green apples with almond butter. So you have the protein from the almond butter, the fat from the almond butter and the fiber from the apple. Another one is a little bit of prosciutto. If you're not a vegetarian, mm -hmm. some figs and a touch of oil of oil. 
Ooh, <laughs> which I, I love experimenting with things <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, or a little bit of pineapple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps some nuts and a little bit of avocado or coconut oil is great or coconut mana. It's like coconut butter and it's mm. amazing. Uh, berries with cream, with whipped cream. If mm -hmm. you can make it out of coconut milk oh. or cream yeah. and you don't even need the sugar because it, the mm. berries are so satiating that you don't need it. And so my goal is to be as satiated as possible for a long periods of time, because then you're not hungry and you're not thinking of food, right? Because right. if you don't have that combination, sometimes you'll get cravings. Right. Excellent. Both of these are so, so good. Um, so uh, um, with the last few minutes that we have, Christy, your thoughts on worship and how that impacts the immune system. I think that'll be an excellent place to stop. And then for those of you who are continuing to listen, if you've got questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. We can address them after the broadcast. So go ahead. You're welcome, okay. Teresa. You're welcome. So my thoughts on worship and the immune system are the act of worship itself is connecting with the creator, with the source of all life. So when we are taking our life force and our energy and connecting with God, who is the creator of everything, then that regenerates in us. And for me personally, um, I like to try to worship every morning, even if it's just one song, mm -hmm. very early in the morning. And I normally wake up with that song. So the Holy Spirit is already kind of put in my spirit, which song uh, to do for that day. And I actually will like sit down and read the lyrics as well, because sometimes you can get lost in the singing and not really understand what he's trying to speak through the lyrics of the song. Um, but again, I have experienced multiple healings just through worship and worship alone. Um, I've been in services where, you know, it, they were extended worship services. Nobody prayed for me. Nobody laid their hands on me. I would walk in with something and I would leave without that something. And it was nothing in the world but connecting with my creator. Beautiful. And, um, and I also am a spirit filled Christian. So I believe in, in speaking in tongues and I practice that on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And they have actually done studies about people, spirit filled Christians and speaking in tongues. And um, I know of one person's testimony in general, she was um, a little older when she, you know, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and began um, using the prayer language. Mm -hmm. And up till that point, she had would get pneumonia twice a year, every single year. And at the time that she gave this testimony, it had been five years, I think. And she had not had pneumonia once. Oh, wow. But and they talked about the um, how much just praying in the spirit boosts your immune system because you are allowing that life force of the Holy Spirit to flow through you. So it's going to quicken. I mean, it says that it quickens our mortal body. It brings it back to life. And part of that quickening of our mortal body is the immune system. And that's what I like to do. You know, connection with him is about getting everything that we need mm -hmm. from the Father. Love Amen it. to that, sister. Oh, so good. <laughs> well, ladies, man, this has been an absolutely life-giving, literally life-giving. Last one, I promise. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I want I want some of those. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. Oh, my gosh. And you both are amazing, amazing. And your ministries are so fruitful and so good. So, folks, uh, just um, uh, in your comments, just, you know, give the give the I love you to both Christy and Marcella. And thank you, ladies. We love so you, much too. For, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. your, dis your discussion points were just absolutely um, fruitful. They were that's what keeps coming to my mind. Very, very profitable to everyone. And, and there are things that we can apply very easily 
into our life. They're, they're, um, oh, and, and Teresa's giving the applause. Oh, yes. So good. Praise God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So with that, folks, we're going to go ahead and close this down. Please like, share this video on your timelines so that others can benefit from the wealth of wisdom that was brought uh, to this discussion today. Um, and uh, we will be back again very soon. So God bless everyone. And thank you so much for participating in this discussion. And again, if you've got questions off um, after this broadcast, go ahead and put them in. We'll, we'll be answering them later on. So again, thank you everyone. And